Listen to a lecture in a biology class. The professor is talking about microflora. Good morning, class. For today, you should have read about microflora in chapter seven of your text. Microflora has a symbiotic relationship with its host animal. The host provides the microflora with a place to live, and the microflora takes food that the host can't metabolize. And breaks it down into a form that can be used by the host. Today, we will discuss two hosts that are completely dependent on microflora for their survival. You can see the first host in this picture. In case you are having difficulty recognizing what this host is, it is a termite. Termites are infamous for destroying anything made of wood because wood contains the one and only item in the termite diet: cellulose. Although termites only eat cellulose, they cannot digest it. The microflora that lives in their digestive tracts takes the cellulose from the wood and converts it into chains of sugars that the termites can digest. Without the microflora, termites could eat but could not gain any calories or nutrients from the food they ate. Microflora is not present in young termite larvae. It is likely that the worker termites pass the microflora to the young as they feed and care for the larvae. Now let's look at the second host. This host is also well known. Can you recognize it? Most people know this host as a koala bear. The koala is not actually a bear at all. It is a marsupial that happens to look a lot like a teddy bear, which is probably how it came to be called a koala bear. Like termites, koalas have a very narrow diet. They obtain both food and water from eucalyptus leaves. The only problem with this diet is that eucalyptus leaves are toxic. Once again, a symbiotic relationship with microflora has allowed the koala to survive. Microflora in the digestive tract converts the toxins in the eucalyptus into a non-toxic form. And the koala is able to survive on a diet of eucalyptus leaves. Also, like the termite, baby koalas do not have the microflora in their digestive tract. Until they are weaned, they don't need it. Around six months postpartum, the mother koala excretes a substance called pap. Pap contains digested eucalyptus leaves and microflora from the mother's stomach. As the baby koala begins the process of weaning. It eats this pap and obtains the microflora it will need to digest eucalyptus leaves on its own. The symbiotic relationship between microflora and some hosts, such as the termite and koala, is crucial to the survival of the host and, in turn, the microflora. In other creatures, especially those with a more varied diet, microflora helps metabolize some foods but is not essential to the survival of the host. There are many symbiotic relationships in nature. Thursday, we will discuss symbiotic soil fungi. Please read Chapter Eight in your text before class. What is the primary reason that the lecturer discusses termites and koalas? What two statements did the lecturer mention about the symbiotic relationship between microflora and termites? Where does the koala most likely live? What potential problem is there with eucalyptus leaves? What is a symbiotic relationship?